I remember a few days later, maybe a week later, meeting with uh, some friends from church, um, at church actually, uh, and just talking to them about it, uh, and and still being very excited, uh, only to have a few extra notes in my range, but that ceiling had had lifted, uh, and I knew at that moment God was uh, in the middle of doing something, uh, you know, and he hadn't done the whole thing. Um, and I remember remarking to, to one of my friends that there, there was kind of a joy in, um, in, in not just having that, that whole healing at once, just to know that he was, that he cared, you know, that he was, he was moving, he was doing something, he knew what I was going through and at just the right time um, gave me that hope. Hi, I'm Brian. I am a worship leader. I've, I've been a worship leader for um, over 30 years, um, starting back in the early 90s. Uh, my passion for music began at a very early age. Um, at the church that I was going to at the time, my sister was in a choir and uh, she told me she wasn't allowed to go unless she had somebody to walk her home afterwards. So she dragged me along and then uh, I've, I've been doing it ever since. I, I began working as a worship leader uh, in about probably 91. Um, I was... Uh, working with a group of, of worship leaders, just kind of sitting in as a, a young 20 something. Um, you know, one day I would bring my keyboard in and just kind of play behind them and just kind of feel like I was there. And then, uh, one day, uh, they just weren't involved anymore. And it was, uh, they had all stepped away. Um, and I was really left being the only one there. I, I had to either step up or, or do something different. And, um, in my heart, I knew I, I really couldn't do something different. So, um, I started leading worship then, um, and I've been doing it for, uh, various churches, probably half a dozen different churches over the years, uh, mostly as a, as a volunteer capacity, but, um, it really is the, uh, the passion of my heart. I, I know that it's um, what I what what I believe I was created to do, um, at least in part. Anyway, in November of 2021, I had uh, partial thyroid surgery where they removed the right side of my thyroid. Um, and a few weeks later, I discovered as a, a complication from that surgery. Uh, that I had lost uh, a large part of my voice, particularly my singing voice, um, where I I just couldn't hit uh, a certain, I could only go, sing so high, and then it was kind of like hitting a ceiling where I couldn't sing past that point. Um, and, and this was devastating to me. Um, I, I wasn't sure what was going to happen. I wasn't sure if this was permanent or, um, you know, if there was something that could be done about it. Um, it, it felt like I had lost a part of me, a part of my body. Um, to, to not be able to sing, uh, as a part of my worship, um, it, there's no other word I can use but devastating. It just, um, it just felt kind of hopeless at that point. Um, I, I did have, begin to have people praying for me for this. Um, not really knowing what to pray for really, but, um, a lot of different people were praying. And, uh, for weeks, and even months, really, nothing, there was nothing happening with that. Um, and, you know, and, and I would still try to worship as best I could in my private time. And uh, I wasn't really singing 
as a worship leader at that time uh, because of that injury. So for about five months, four or five months, uh, there was absolutely no change uh, in my voice. Um, I, every time I would try, I just kept hitting that wall. Um, and uh, I, it was, I was frustrated, very frustrated, very um, uh, unsure about the future for what I was going to be able to do. Um, and then one day in April, I believe it was April 5th, 2022. It was a long day. I worked all day and I, I was teaching after that and had been talking a lot. And I was just tired, exhausted, uh, went home and just kind of sat on the couch and had the TV on. I'm not even sure if I was actually watching anything. And then after a while, I just kind of started to realize I, I was humming something. Um, and I, it, I quickly kind of caught myself and, and thought, I think I actually out loud might have even said, I, I'm not supposed to be able to sing this right now. So then I tried it again and, and it was there. Um, and then I, I even went and recorded it just to make sure I wasn't like imagining it or just, you know, uh, thinking that I was singing something higher than what I was really singing. Um, and so I recorded it and, it, it, you know, it wasn't great because, you know, there was still some trauma there, but I was actually able to sing, um, the, the, the words to the song, uh, worthy of it all. Um, and I, I didn't even realize I was doing it. Um, and that, that was very, um, exciting for me. Um, obviously it was a little, um, surprising, but it was m more exciting than anything else that, that God had started to do something in me. I remember a few days later, maybe a week later, meeting with, uh, some friends from church, um, at church actually, uh, and just talking to them about it. Uh, and, and still being very excited, uh, only to have a few extra notes in my range, but that ceiling had, had lifted. Uh, and I knew at that moment, God was, uh, in the middle of doing something, uh, you know, and he hadn't done the whole thing. Um, and I remember remarking to, to one of my friends that there, there was kind of a joy in, um, and, and not just having that, that whole healing at once of being able to s see him, just to know that he was, that he cared, you know, that he was, he was moving. He was doing something. He knew what I was going through and at just the right time, um, gave me that hope, gave me that little bit of, um, encouragement that I needed to, to hear him say, basically, I've, I've got you, you know, you're, you're, you're on a journey and I'm going on this journey with you. Um, and I remember that being almost more exciting than, uh, like I said, than a complete healing altogether. And so over the, the period of the next six months or so, uh, he began to do more and more where my range began to come back, um, uh, more and more. Um, and, and each time I would be more excited about it, uh, and continue to give him the glory for what he was continuing to do. Um, and, and as I sit here now, um, I guess about a year after that, uh, having, uh, pretty much most of my voice back, um, in some ways, maybe even better than before, um, just because of the work that I've done in, um, some like therapy and just extra training practicing that I had gotten away from doing years ago. I still see that he's not done yet. Um, that he still has work to do, but that I'm still excited to be uh, 
on that path, on that journey to what he's doing. I will just continue to give him glory for what he has done, uh, for what he is doing, and for what he will continue to do. So, hey, Brian, you mentioned a recording that did that moment that you were humming that song and came to the realization that you shouldn't have even been able to do that. Do you happen to have the recording with you? Yes, I do, actually. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things. And to you... Well, as I mentioned before, I was, I, I was really... I don't want to say in disbelief, but I was really in that moment of like... I, I got to check this out. I got to see if this is really... Like, am I really doing what I think I'm doing? Um... And uh, it it wasn't lost on me that the the song that I just happened to be singing uh, is this the the words to the song say you are worthy of it all you are worthy of it all for from you are all things and to you are all things you deserve the glory um and in that moment while I was you know squeaking out those notes um. I, I really meant every one of those words as a, a, a true um, rejoicing from my heart for, for what he was even doing in that moment, even when I wasn't sure what he was doing. Um, he is worthy of it all. Brian, what would you like to tell a viewer who's possibly on the other side of the screen going through something similar? Um, feeling like they have a setback or they've lost something precious um, and are really worried or fearful that they'll never be able to regain it? I would say the biggest thing is to just know that uh, wherever you are on, on that journey, uh, that the Lord is there um, with you on that journey, wanting to... to bring you through to the other side, to a, a, a greater outcome than you can even really um, think or imagine. To, um, to continue to pray, to continue to uh, surround yourself with, um, with godly people who, who will lift you up in prayer, uh, who will pray for you, pray with you. Um, and just to continue to move forward in faith for what he will do, what he has done, and what he's currently doing, even though you can't see it, maybe, or hear it.